So just wait. <coughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much for waiting for the lecture. Actually, I was not getting my ticket. So finally, I got it. Uh, I hope my voice is clear. So we are about to complete our topic number two. So the content which we have chosen for the topic number two for today's discussion is uh, I'm going to show, I'm going to explain you also. Already we guys have seen something different in past lectures. Even I have shared the link of certain videos for you guys. I hope you guys have gone through those videos. If not, please go through the videos so that we can have, you know, thorough uh, knowledge of those concepts which are used in the research. So I'm going to start your session. Please allow me to share my screen so that uh, you can enjoy the PPT. Is my screen visible? Is my screen visible, boys and girls? Yes, sir. Okay, so today we are going to talk about uh, hypothesis today, the concept of hypothesis we are going to see in a precise manner. Just wait for a while, I'll close the door and I'll get back to you. Okay, okay, I, I hope I'm audible now. So friends, in this lecture, we are going to talk about the concept of hypothesis and uh, what are the different types of hypothesis. Already we guys have seen so many things about hypothesis or uh, hypothesis in past offline lectures. But uh, I thought there were so many people they couldn't attend, uh, attend the uh, you know offline lectures. So whatever is the question that I wanted to deal with, that I wanted to go for it, that I'm going to tell you through this particular uh, lecture, which is called as the concept of hypothesis. I'm going to cover. I hope, as we know, that the concept of hypothesis is not new for we all. And uh, without the hypothesis, research is not at all possible. If you want to go for hypothesis, then research is the most important aspect. And without the hypothesis and objectives of research, we cannot complete the research. So this is what hypo hypothesis plays an important role whenever we go for the concept of research or whenever we want to go for the completion of research. So the completion of research is totally dependent upon the hypothesis that you are constructing for your research. So this is what hypothesis is the most important aspect. And without hypothesis, we cannot complete the research that I told you already. So what is this hypothesis? What sort of important this particular hypothesis is having? So these and other things we are discussing here. Even we are going to talk about what sort of, uh, you know, uh, types are there for the concept of hypothesis and what hypothesis is called as. So this is my uh, topic of discussion today. And uh, I want your participation in this lecture also basically you know uh, actually i wanted to give off for today's lecture but uh, i thought no i'm not going for giving off because uh, you know there were certain health issues for me but i thought you know instead of going giving off lectures why don't i go for one lecture and uh, this whole this lecture is going to be conducted so if you have any question at the end of the lecture, you can ask me that question or you can ask your queries at the end of this session. This is my request. So without wasting your time, I'm going to start the session today. And uh, here we are. Actually, the concept of hypothesis is not new for all of us, as we know that. The concept we have already discussed in the uh, offline lectures. I think there are only five or six people who are there for offline lectures. This is what I'm going to explain all those things once again. Hypothesis is nothing but what it is, a specific testable prediction. So hypothesis is called as prediction. I hope you guys are aware with the concept of prediction and uh, how it is testable that I will tell you. Prediction is nothing but what the guess that we make. I think we guys are uh, watching, you know, uh, matters. We guys are watching, you know, even uh, some suspense thriller also movies and serials also so before uh, when we, we when um, the match starts or the serial starts we make our prediction like that today india is going to win or today this particular thing is going to happen so 
this kind of guess we make and whatever guess we are making that particular guess is called as prediction so hypothesis is nothing but what a prediction which we are making for the purpose of research in research as i told you there is a huge importance for the concept of uh, hypothesis and without any hypothesis research is not possible so what is this hypothesis 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 is nothing but what a sort of prediction a sort of specific and definite prediction definite guess definite thing that we write before going for the research so hypothesis is nothing but what a prediction that we make before starting the research whenever we want to start the concept of research or whenever we want to start the research or project we need to go for uh, one sort of uh, you know making certain sort of predictions and when these kind of predictions are made uh, it can be called as uh, you know uh, hypothesis for example if you are doing a research study for example if you are doing a research study and if you are doing a project for example and if your project is related to any bank or any organization suppose you are conducting a research project on bank and your topic is related to financial performance analysis so you can make you can predict one thing you can predict one thing here and that thing is what suppose if you are uh, writing like that the you know the financial position of this state bank of india is sound or very good so this is your prediction and whenever you will complete your research or whenever you will complete your project the actual projection will be that and it may be correct whatever you had uh, predicted at the beginning it may be correct or may not be correct it is up to the results that we get through your project so that is up to the result but before starting the project work we make one thing and that particular thing is called as uh, prediction that particular thing is called as um, that particular thing is called as uh, you know what we call it that particular thing is called as hypothesis so this is what uh, you know i would like to say something about that one. so this is the things which is called as prediction just a minute ek <clears throat> minute okay so hypothesis is nothing but what a prediction that we make and here we have used one more word also and that word is what a specific hypothesis should be specific it should be more specific it should be specific and this is what we call it hypothesis is the most and important one and uh, whatever uh, predictions we are writing that should be specific then there is one more word which is called as testable whatever hypothesis we are making that should be tested there should be a chance to test it so whatever we are making it it can be testable also we have, there should be a chance to test it and this is what it is called as testable prediction then it describes in concrete term what you expect will happen in a certain circumstances see here we are talking about it describes in a concrete term what you expect will happen in a certain circumstances so hypotheses are constructed for the purpose of describing a concrete term or a specific term or a main term of your research and basically uh, it is there for a certain circumstances also just now i told you about the financial performance of a bank then here in this case when it comes to just a minute uh,
okay so uh, can you hear me now <coughs> can you hear me hello yes sir okay so it describes in a concrete term and whatever hypothesis we are making those should be in a concrete term and that should describe the main concept that we want to make at the prediction so this is what it is called as a testable prediction this is also called as a specific prediction in whatever a specific prediction or testable prediction we are making before starting the research is called as hypothesis in terms of research i hope you either understood what i mean to say moving on to the next one here there are certain definitions of research which we have taken i think image is a little bit blur but i will explain you no issue i think i hope you are able to see this image so here certain definition of hypothesis we have taken here and through this hypothesis definition of hypothesis we are going to understand the concept of hypothesis in a detailed manner so just look at the definitions i'm going to explain all these definitions one by one definition number one talks about what research hypothesis is a prediction of the relationship between two or more variables see here what uh, they have said it is a relationship between or it is a prediction about relationship between two or more variables so see whenever we want to go for the research we need to go for two different variables we need to go for the comparison of two different variables and when we go for comparison of two different variables it is called as you know uh, when we go for two different types of variables and when we compare between these two different variables we try to show that what sort of relationship is there between two different variables so here as far as the definition number one is concerned a research hypothesis is a just just a prediction of what it is a prediction about relationship between relationship of what there is a uh, we try to find out relationship between two different variables for example if you are going to find out the marketing strategies and financial performance if you are going to find out what sort of relationship is there between marketing strategies and uh, uh, financial performance of the bank then we can predict one hypothesis and we are trying to show that how it is possible or not then second hypothesis is here with us but before going for the second hypothesis let me tell you something about hypothesis number one what we understood hypothesis is nothing but what it is a prediction which shows the relationship between two or more variables variable means nothing but what qualities different aspects factors and elements now we can move on to the second uh, hypothesis or definition of hypothesis here a hypothesis is a formal statement of the expected relationship between two or more variable in a specified population getting uh, i think see this definition is a little bit deeper than the previous one and here we are going to understand the concept of hypothesis in a different manner so what it says it says that it is a formal statement hypothesis is nothing but a formal statement like uh, whatever statement we make like that so it is a hypothesis or it is a formal statement which is expected a relationship between two or more variables that we understood whatever you know relationship we try to show that is there for two or more variables but here there is one more word which is used in a different manner and that word is very much important here to understand the a definition of hypothesis what is that word that word is specified population so whatever is the specified population let me tell you population is meant what in terms of marathi we call it lok sankhya but here we are not taking lok sankhya as population as far as the research is concerned population is nothing but what the people that you have selected for the purpose of research for example it is it is called as people it is called as institution it is called as respondents suppose you guys have selected uh, you know uh, public sector banks for the purpose of research then whatever public sector banks you are going to study or whatever banks you are covering for your study that can be or those banks can be called as population of your research getting my point suppose you have decided to go for the study of public sector banks in pune district so whatever number of public sector banks which is there in pune district that is called as population so we do not go for entire population it is not possible for all of us to go for the entire or the number of total branches of public sector banks in pune district so we select something 
so that we are going to see in terms of what uh, you know uh, uh, sampling so here what they have showed it is a relationship between it is a statement it is a formal statement which is uh, there to uh, which is which expects relationship between two or more variables but in a specified population the word the last word is very much important to understand the concept of what the uh, and hypothesis and here they have made an addition an addition what specified population compared to previous definition it is a formal statement no doubt why this formal statement is made this formal statement is made to show the relationship between two or more more variables and it is therefore a specified population that is the addition so this is definition number 2 now we are going to talk about definition number 3 so here in definition number 3 what they have given we are going to see in a thorough manner hypothesis can be considered as intelligent uh what we call it hunches educated guesses or predictions that can assist the researcher in seeking the solution or answer to the research questions so i think this one is a very very elaborative and precise definition of hypothesis and from this particular definition we can understand everything about the hypothesis what they have said hypothesis can be considered we can consider hypothesis as what intelligent hunches it is a intelligent guess why it is called as intelligent intelligent guess because whenever you want to make a guess we need to have some intellectual capacity to make it when we make a guess on the basis of intellectual capacity that is uh, most of, most of the time that is correct so this is what uh, they have called hypothesis as a intelligent guess similarly they have said educated guesses educated guesses means what before applying the logic for you know putting forward your guess we guys have taken some study we guys have done some study and on the basis of knowledge we which we have got through those things it becomes educated guesses or predictions guesses and predictions both are little bit same that can assist why this kind of intelligent hunches educated guesses and predictions are made because these predictions guesses and hunches are also useful or also helpful to the researcher in seeking the solution of answer to the research question see when we start research or when researchers start their research when they start their research uh you know what happens uh, they ask some questions to themselves they ask some questions to themselves and they want answers to their research questions at the end of the study so this hypothesis is nothing but what a guess which is made for made as not for as a solution for their questions see if i am a researcher and if i if i start a research study so at the time of starting my research study there are n number of questions which are there in my mind so i try to find out the answer i try to seek the answers i try to seek the solutions of those questions through my research study by constructing hypotheses so hypotheses are the solutions for the questions asked by the researchers during his studies getting my point so these are the definitions of hypothesis which we have seen here i hope we guys have understood the concept of hypothesis in a precise manner now moving on to the next one and here we are going to see the definition one more time here also they have given the definition of research or hypothesis in a very different manner so let's just look at this i think i am also going to explain <coughs> sorry this definition of hypothesis in a precise manner to what they have said just go through this one hypothesis is a tentative prediction it's it is a temporary prediction not permanent prediction as such and predictions are always tentative remember whatever predictions we are making those are always temporary or tentative we do not make predictions for or we do not make permanent prediction as such so whatever predictions we are making all those predictions are tentative or temporary or explanation of the relationship between two variables so whatever predictions we are making those are also called as explanation of 
the relationship between two different variables so if we are considering two different variables for the purpose of showing the relationship between these two so it is a sort of explanation of those different variables and that is hypothesis in a short term it implies that there is a systematic relationship between an in, an independent and dependent variables now here we can understand uh, you know uh, two different words dependent variable and independent variable independent variable means what which is not depend upon anything else okay and dependent variable means what which is depend upon something so this is the concept of uh, dependent and independent so here through hypothesis we try to show a systematic relationship between dependent variable and independent variable i will give you an example of dependent variable and independent variable suppose if i want to incur my expenses for my family for example if i want to pay the fee of my child if i want to pay something for grocery if i want to pay something for petrol so all these are my different heads of expenses so this can be called as what dependent variables how it is dependent variables because all these things or all these expenses are depend upon my salary so salary is my independent variable and whatever examples of expenses i have told you just now those are the dependent variables without fail i hope you guys have understood the concept of dependent and independent variable in a thorough manner moving on to the next one and here we are going to see the features of hypothesis what are the features of hypothesis there are so many features of hypothesis already we guys have seen in past lecture and here i am talking about in a precise manner so what is that just look at this hypothesis should be conceptual already we have talked just i'm giving an idea about it hypothesis or hypothesis should be conceptual hypothesis should be verbal statement it should be a verbal statement it should be empirical referent empirical means what based on experiences it should be tentative relationship it should be used for showing the tentative relationship just now we have seen in the definition then tool of knowledge advancement this hypothesis can be called as tool of knowledge advancement it should be tested i think we all have seen the you know features of hypothesis in the last offline lectures then it not moral there should not be a moral and neither too specific nor too general it should not be too much specific or should not be too much general it should be proper then prediction of consequences through the hypothesis we try to show the prediction of consequences whatever consequences we come across and the last one hypothesis should be or hypothesis should be valuable as far as the research study is concerned for the researcher hypothesis is the most valuable aspect as such i hope you guys are understanding what i mean to say so all these are the features already we guys have talked about all those things in the past lectures now just i'm giving an idea so that we can go ahead now these are the characteristics here certain characteristics of hypothesis i have noted down just look at this hypothesis should be clear and precise this part also we have seen in the past lectures but there are certain people those who are new for the lecture and i thought why don't i go for this thing again and this is what i'm going through all these things again so whatever hypothesis we are constructing we are writing for our research study should be very much clear and very much precise also then hypothesis should be capable of being tested whatever hypothesis we are using for the purpose of research should be testable if it is not testable then there then there is no use of that particular hypothesis because your results are totally depend upon whether it is testable or testable or not then hypothesis should st state the relationship between variables as i told you basically hypotheses are made to state the relationship to show the relationship between different types of variables so whatever variables we have for the purpose of study if we want to show the relationship between these two variables or whatever variables we have then hypotheses can be used then hypotheses should be limited to scope and must be specific whatever hypotheses we are using 
those should be limited to scope the scope of hypothesis should be limited and those should be very much specific and the last one hypothesis should be tested in most simple term if you want to test your hypothesis that should be tested in a very simple uh, term there should not be uh, you know uh, there should not be advanced logic to test the hypothesis so whatever hypothesis you are testing that should be simple and the terms we are using for the purpose of testing the hypothesis should be simple one to understand so these are the characteristics of hypothesis which we are going to see in a thorough manner now what are the features of good hypothesis we are going to see if you want to construct a good hypothesis then what are the features that particular good hypothesis should have or if you want to go for a good hypothesis what can be or what it can be and what it cannot be also so what is that just look at the slides so here the hypothesis must be conceptually clear whatever hypothesis you are writing that should be conceptually clear the concept that you are trying to show in the hypothesis should be very much clear to understand if you are going for ambiguity or if you are going for sort of confusion in the concept that you are using for the hypothesis then it will be called as ambiguous hypothesis as such now all the concepts used in the hypothesis must be clearly defined whatever concepts you are using in the <coughs> sorry using for construction of hypothesis must be clear and if it is not clear then there is a problem then a hypothesis must be empirically testable concepts which do not have empirical basis must be included must must not be included in the hypothesis then what they have said a hypothesis must be empirically testable empirical means what it should be tested on tested on the basis of experiences received or acquired by the researcher and this is what they have said concepts which do not have empirical basis must not be included in the hypothesis and whatever concepts those who are not tested on empirical basis should not be used in the hypothesis they want to say like that then a hypothesis must be specific and precise whatever hypothesis we are using and if it, if you want to make your hypothesis good then it should be specific and precise too the possible relationship among the variable must be precisely stated in the hypothesis and whatever relationship you want to show that can be called as possible relationship uh, between two different variables that should be shown in the hypothesis in a precise manner then a hypothesis should be consistent with known facts see known facts means for the things which are aware to the researcher so it should consist those thing which can be called as known facts then a hypothesis must have a theoretical orientation there should be a theoretical base for the hypothesis so whatever hypothesis is you are constructing for your research those should have a theoretical orientation a good hypothesis must be able to support or refute means deny an existing theory of social relationships or relations so what is that this is what they have said if there is a good relationship if there is a good hypothesis it must be able to support or deny existing theory of social relationship relations a hypothesis must be clear definite and uh, stated in a simple manner whatever hypothesis you are writing for your study that should be very much clear very much definite and should be in a simple manner so that everyone can understand if you are trying to write a complex hypothesis it will be or it will not be a good point for the purpose of research and the last one a hypothesis says must have a reasonable explanation to any problem in the present state of knowledge so whatever hypothesis you are writing here that should have a reasonable explanation and that should be reflected in the hypothesis as such so these are the features we can say these points are required to make your hypothesis good or these points can be called as features of good hypothesis if i am not wrong so this is for features of good hypothesis is now the types of hypothesis is in a detailed manner i hope i know that the image is blur but no issue types of hypothesis are there are different types of hypothesis we write in 
research study for the purpose of research and those are simple hypothesis complex hypothesis empirical hypothesis null hypothesis alternative hypothesis logical hypothesis stochastical hypothesis and so on so we are going to see all these types of hypotheses in days to come or in uh, uh, upcoming lectures also so we are starting with the first one that is simple hypothesis what do you mean by simple hypothesis that also i'm going to tell you it is called a symbol because we write this particular hypothesis or the way of writing this kind of hypothesis is very simple we do not make it complex so what is this simple hypothesis just look at this simple hypothesis is that one in which <coughs> there exists a relationship between two variables one is called as independent variable or cause and the another is dependent variable or effect and here we try to show the cause and effect relationship so see in this kind of hypothesis which is called a simple hypothesis and in this kind of hypothesis what we do exactly we try to show the relationship between two different variables and those two different variables or out of those uh, two different variable one is called as independent and another one is called as dependent so that independent is called as cause and dependent is called as effect so basically these kind of hypotheses are made for the purpose of showing cause and effect relationship karan ani parinam he jar tumhala dakhvaycha asel tar we can go for such kind of hypotheses in this particular type which is called a simple hypothesis i have given the example see smoking leads to cancer smoking is the cause and cancer is the effect if you smoke there is a possibility of having cancer so see what we are going to show here two dependent uh, two variables we are considering here smoking is independent variable whereas cancer is dependent variable when cancer is possible when we go for smoking smoking is independent but on smoking which is depend getting a cancer is dependent depend upon it is depend upon smoking if you smoke there is a cancer if you do not smoke there is no question of cancer so smoking is a cause and cancer is the effect so we try to show the relationship between smoking and cancer and this is what when we make such kind of statement smoking leads to cancer this is our hypothesis for example this is our hypothesis so in this we can see that smoking is independent variable cancer is dependent variable and we are trying to show the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable it means we are trying to show the relationship between smoking and cancer and when we go for it it becomes simple hypothesis getting my point then the one more example i have given here the higher ratio of unemployment leads to crimes what i am going to show you here one more example i have given here the higher ratio of unemployment leads to crime if you if you have studied if you have acquired higher qualification and still you are unemployed then it leads to crime it means what unemployment is the cause and crimes is the or crime is the effect so crimes are depend upon unemployment if there is unemployment definitely there is a possibility of having crimes so this is what we are trying to show the relationship between uh, independent variable and uh, dependent variable and this can be called about cause and effect relationship and whenever we want to go for showing cause and relationship cause and effect relationship then we go for simple hypothesis and i hope you guys have understood the concept of simple hypothesis in a precise manner moving on to the next one and that is complex one and we are going to see this concept of complex hypothesis in tomorrow's lecture today we take a break here and uh, i'll get back to the home screen and i'll ask some questions to you okay am i audible yes sir i hope you guys have understood whatever i mean to say today i talked about you know the concept of hypothesis characteristics features the features of good hypothesis and the only one type of hypothesis in today's session the rest of the types of hypothesis will be there in tomorrow's session tomorrow also we are going to join at 12 o'clock sharp without any 
difficulty. So be there. And I request you all to join before five minutes so that I can start your session at 12 sharp. So this is my humble request. And now I request, I have one more request to make. And that request is what? If you want to ask some questions, you can ask some questions. Then when I answer your questions, then we can stop. Ask a guy, Prashna. Prashna, Ask No, sir. Okay, shall I stop now? Yes, sir. I'm going to stop the recording first. <laughs>